Hey YouTube, welcome to the Off Grid Mountain Homestead via Southern Prepper One's homestead. So if you've watched this video and you came over here to see this video on my channel, uh, you know that we built a prototype solar generator power box set up using a Chins lithium iron phosphate battery, an alpha 1500 watt, 12 volt to 110 volt inverter. And we have a 20 amp lithium iron phosphate smart charger, wall charger and a EP solar 30 amp solar charge controller. So this is a, a prototype build. This would not be a permanent install like this. This was just proof of concept. So I'm gonna go over, go over all the components uh, in detail. So this is a basic overview of it. So now we'll take each individual component and discuss it. So for the, the heart of this system, well, yeah, the heart, the feet, whatever you wanna call it. This is the, the beast right here, this big chins. 200 amp hour uh, plus lithium iron phosphate battery. It's got a 200 amp battery management system in it. And if you divide the watt hours out, you're roughly 2.5 kilowatts worth of capacity in this battery. And we have the alpha 1500 watt inverter and just some double sided tape on this Renogy shunt. So we'll go into this component as well. Uh, this is a sampling shunt. So this goes on your negative battery cable from your load to your battery. And it gives you display, shows you your, your wattage draw. So I'll turn the inverter off and that should drop to zero, just like that. So this lets you know how much charge is going in or coming out of your battery. And you can see the display went off cause there's no power moving through it. And you turn it back on, this glows green, solid green when it's withdrawing or pulling power and flashes when you're charging. We added fuse protection in. So this is a little a little underrated for this battery, what this battery is capable of, but it is sized to protect the wire. And that's the most important priority when fusing is to protect it or size it for the wire that you need to protect. So we match the breaker to the wire size. Same thing on the, this is the breaker for the solar charge control. It's a 30 amp solar charge control we're using 10 gauge PV cable. So we protected it at 30 amps. There is no battery on off switch on this system since it's a prototype, but if you needed to turn everything off, you can just hit the reset switches on the breakers and everything is safe. And if you want to turn everything back on without using a, a battery switch for a prototype, I'd recommend a switch for a permanent install, but just flip, the, uh, flip them back in there like such and there gives us power back to everything brings the system back online and this is a HTAC budget friendly 20 amp lithium iron phosphate charge controller but it's got multiple it'll do NMC lithium ion it'll do regular lead acid and it's got a switch where you can change all your settings and stuff on it so this is a budget friendly uh, charger so this is basically on a pre-packaged solar generator this would be your your wall plug more or less so I'll show you how it works. Did not use terminals because this is gonna be used to charge charge Southern Prepper 1's 12 volt lithium batteries when we're done with this experiment or prototype testing. So we did not cut the, cut the alligator terminals off and put ring terminals in. You would want to put ring terminals in if you're doing a permanent install, but this is just for, for testing. So I'll get it hooked up and show you how it works. As you can see that it is off now the shunt is three watt, 3.7 watts off the inverter. Got it on the sampling arm, and then I'm gonna plug it in on the positive. And you can see, there it goes, starting to, it'll take it a second, but it'll show you its charge and amperage, voltage, all that good stuff. And you can see the display here is flashing. So I'll give it a second. It'll be about just a minute. Once it gets up, ramped up all the way, it takes about 30 seconds. So here's the charger in operation putting almost 16 amps into the battery. We'll come out here to the shunt, showing 14.8 amps. And that's just line losses between the charger and the shunt. On to the next item is this EP Solar, MPPT solar charge controller. That's maximum power point tracking. This optimizes your solar charge. This particular model will take up to 540 watts a panel. Uh, so I've got PV leads in here. It's a cloudy, rainy day, so really can't show you the actual PV input on it today. 
but like I said, this is a proof of concept. So everything's wired up on this. So it would accept PV and charge just like a solar generator would. So now we'll, uh, let me compare size wise. See if you can, if I can get a shot of this, how big everything is. This is 2.5 kW. Then here is a solar power box that is 2.0 kW worth of capacity or 2000 watt hours. And this actually has a larger inverter than the prototype. I don't know if you can see the size, how much room all the homemade or hand built one takes up. So all these components that you see here are already built into this small portable machine. So now we'll go over some pricing and then we'll do a demonstration. So here's a little chicken scratch on the uh, whiteboard for convenience to show you all the components. So we'll start with the, the Chins battery, 200 amp hour plus LiPo 4, $679.99. And links to all this will be in the description of the video if you want to look it up for your research or if you're interested in purchasing some of this, I'll include the links in the description. So the Alpha 12 volt 1500 watt inverter was $199.99. The Renogy shunt kit with the sampler and display is $61.99. And the 30 amp EP solar charge controller is $94.99. And then the smart charger, the 20 amp wall charger, 58.93. 100 amp breaker and 30 amp breaker, respectively, are $24.99 each. And then for miscellaneous, uh, Southern Prepper One had the wire on site, so we didn't buy that. But just an estimate what it would cost you to buy the wire and miscellaneous crimps would be $40. So the total cost, not including specialty tools, if you need the crimper or MC4 tool. So I just, this is not included in the price, but that's a good estimate on your tools. So you would need $1,185.87 to build this system, plus your time and specialty tools. So you'll need to add in that for specialty tools if you do not have electrician's tools or specialty tools already on hand. And a solar generator or portable power station is... $14.99.99. It's compact. It's ready to go. You don't have to work on it. So you got to kind of pick your, you know, pick what you want, whether you want one prepackaged, pre built for you, or if you want to build it yourself. For something on this size, 1,500, 2,000 watts, two to three kilowatts worth of capacity, I personally would get a pre made one because there's not that big of a price difference between the two. And it's portable, it's compact. And you won't have children or anybody around trying to touch terminals. You'd have to build some kind of cover to keep all this safe so nobody shorts anything out. So the safety is definitely with the power box versus an open exposed system like this. And are there benefits to a hand-built system versus a prepackaged system? Well, yes. Just like everything in life, there's pros and cons to each path that you take. So if something fails in this, there's all kinds of little parts all built in together. So, you know, that's almost unrepairable at home unless you're an electronics expert. And if you want to see what is inside a solar generator, check back on my channel in a few days. I have a solar generator that I will tear apart and let you see what is inside. So be sure to stay tuned and check back. And I'm going to tear one of these apart. Not this particular model, but I'm going to tear one apart to show you what's all inside of it. Just so you can see the size of the components for a hand-built system versus a pre-packaged one. So that's coming too. Now this system right here, if something breaks, one component fails, you just remove that component, replace it. Or if you needed more power, you can increase the size. You can add capacity to it very easily. So those are some, some pros to a home-built system versus a pre-packaged system. So quick demonstration to show that this works. So this is a basic overview, uh, pros and cons, cost on building your own solar generator versus a pre-packaged one so questions need more details anything please stick in the comments i hope i earned a like from you today 
I'd appreciate you hitting that like button. Help me get on the algorithm a little bit. And if you're not subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate a subscription from you. So thank you for watching the Awkward Mountain Homestead. And thanks to Southern Prepper One for having me over today to assist with this homemade solar generator project.